Hi, it's Susan. I have a tutorial for you today. A lot of you guys have been asking me for how to make a journal out of my index cards, which you might remember that for ICAD 2019, I opted to do a lot of patchwork index cards. So this is using the 4x6 card, and this is using the 3x5 cards. And I just did patchwork with them, and then stitched all over the place, and then I went back and added lace, and then I made them into journals. And so here are a couple of the journals that I have made. I've since changed the method of binding, but little charm, we've got my patchwork. This one's got a lace on the back. It's got a pocket in the front and a pocket in the back, and then just some plain paper. And then these are done with a simple single hole ribbon binding. That's one, and you can also do your patchworks with papers, and that works out great for using up your scraps of paper. This came out really neat. It, it somehow, even though it's all still paper, it just sort of changes the texture. And you've got a pocket and some pages. So, how do we get started? Well, the patchworks for me are just a really fun thing to do while I'm watching TV I will just start gluing the patchworks down onto an index card. This tutorial is going to be using the 4x6 cards because it's the easiest to make. You only have to cut the paper once when you put it in. So I just start off, I've got a 4x6 card. Now you can, some of the cards, you may have heard me talk about this before, you can put a padding on it and gives it kind of like a quilted feel, but you don't have to. It comes out just fine if you don't do that. So I have my card and I just sort of use a glue stick to kind of stick things down all over the place. Now you could use some heat and bond. I just, like I said, this is a TV activity. It's pretty easy for me to sit here and, and do that. And then I go around and uh, I zigzag all over the place. And you can do it that way with a zigzag or you can just kind of, if you can see here, I have just sort of crazy quilted, free motion quilted, even though I don't have a free motion machine, you can still, you know, turn your card around while you're sewing and get that same effect. And this sort of a free motion effect is a lot nicer if you have a little bit of padding underneath it. So first, I just glue things down however I want my patchwork. Then I zigzag all around them. And then I add a few pieces of lace just to dress them up, okay? Then I had to decide what kind of a form I was going to use, a base, you know, for everything. And I had a whole bunch of Pendaflex folders, so that works. Old file folders work. Um, something uh, Smithsonian Magazine that I get is like a really big oversized magazine, and the covers are a nice heavy weight. That's a nice thing. She can still sew over it. So I cut my folders, and what I try to do is make sure you fold if I want my pocket I want to fold that before I'm gonna put my fabric on it because it's a lot harder to find out where I want to you know have my pockets let's see where'd my other one go I'll show you so if you have your pocket here it's a lot harder to figure out where to make that fold once you have the, all the fabric on it so what I do before I start to cover it is I take my card that I'm gonna use I leave a little bit of space here for the the way it's going to bulk up when you put the fabric or put the inside papers in and then I just kind of fold up a little bit. I actually want to give it a little bit more room there just to kind of have an idea. All right. Then on that fold, I'm going to go the other way. I know my pocket's going to go inside and I'm just going to double check make sure I've got enough room there. I'm going to have enough room to do this all the way around. So I'm going to crease that one down and then I'm just going to fold that up that way. And now I know once this is covered with fabric on both sides, then I can fold my pockets in and I'm going to fold my journal over and that's going to be good. Now I happen to put the index card part on last. You can certainly sew it to the fabric ahead of time, but here's what I do. After I've got my folds on here, I have my material cut for my inside. 
Okay, so my folds are here. I know this is where it's gonna fold in. And I go around with a straight stitch just at the edge. See, just at the edge there. And what that does is gives me a little bit of a line to follow when I put my other cover on. All right, so then I'm gonna take my outside cover piece of material and because I want to stitch it all around here but I'm not going to be able to see my line I put a little bit of glue stick on this to hold it down and then when I flip this over I just use my straight line that I had already stitched as a guideline to go around that with my zigzag okay so now I want to do the pockets and the closure and I thought about how I wanted to do the closure on these. And usually what I do on my journals is I have some kind of a way of either attaching it at the flaps or at the side, and then I tie it across the center. I wanted to do something a little different this time. So what I want to do is have it come up through the pocket, and then I can tie it. like this up here. Oh, it's a little uneven. Let's see. So we're going to be a bit like this. I can make the boat prettier when I'm done. And then my little index card is going to be here like so. All right. Now, remember, you can't, you don't have to do what I'm going to do, which is to glue the index card on later. You could go ahead and uh, sew this on to your uh, front cover before you, you know, attach it to here. I just didn't do that. I'm going to do the, the gluing because I've got to do some sewing onto this as well. So my Sorry Silk is about 30 inches long for the 4x6 journals. That's something that works for me. Your mileage might vary. All those wonderful little silk threads, I love them. All right, so I do need to figure out before I put the glue down. I'm just gonna use some Fabri-Tac on this. I'm gonna make sure I have the right lengths. So it needs to be longer at the bottom than at the top. Is that about right? I hear Zoe waking up from her nap and saying hello. All right, I think that's going to work. So hopefully, Habertag. There. There. And there. And maybe just so stuff doesn't get caught underneath there, depending on what you're putting in your pocket. Just a, just a little bit of fabric tack at the outside edge. All right, and then I'm going to glue the sides. always worry if I'm getting enough on there. You just never know what kind of abuse they might take once they leave your house. And I've got some little clips just to hold it while it dries. Not abuse like somebody's going to be hard on it, but you just don't, you just don't know. You just don't know. All right. And then we're going to go. Come on, Fabri-Tac. Just a little more work from you. These have just really become almost a meditation for me making these patchworks. So I was really pleased to be able to come up with a simple journal to use them up with. And then that's turned into a really big project since I got an order for 60 of these little journals. So I'll be busy making these for quite some time. Okay, so our pockets are dry. Our 
closure is dry or is glued in there and now I can think about papers. And what I like about working with the 4x6 size index cards is then that size journal just uses my regular printer paper and it's cut in half and then folded in half and I'm using an ivory color. Now I like a lot of space around mine there. You can cut yours as close as you want but that's kind of the way I like mine to fit. And so for this particular journal, I'm going to be doing it Traveler's Notebook style. Even though I'm not going to use the elastic closure, I want to do the elastic in there so things can be replaced. So what I did was cut some elastic. This is one millimeter elastic. It works nice for these um, lightweight journals. I went one, two, and then three to give me that amount of space. And then what I'm going to do is poke my center okay I'm gonna poke some holes I'm just eyeballing it um, sorry I'm not eyeballing eyeballing it I am taking this <laughs> to measure my outside edge so then you can mark your outside hole and then I eyeball the second hole so so the first thing I'm gonna do is mark my holes so I know I need to go there and about there and then I'm just going to use my crop a dial and since I'm using the really uh, skinny elastic that's just one millimeter I want my little holes and then I'm just going to eyeball going in just a little more Scoot it over a little bit, but I think that's still going to be okay. And can't see. There, now I can see my hole. All right, and then we want to do one more right there. And then I'm just going to go forward a little there. Okay, and then make sure through the holes. The fabric's got all those little wonderful threads. Probably would be a good idea to put some fray check around there. And then I'm going to start with the lower hole on this side. And then I'm going to come back through the other side. So I've got a little tail here. I'm going to do the same thing here. And I've got some brown elastic coming tomorrow, so I'll swap that out for this blackout for the brown on this one. All right, that's your center. And then you want to get it snug because otherwise your pages are going to slip all over the place. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call that pretty good there. But because I know I'm going to swap it out, I'm only going to do a double knot so that I can untie this and replace it with the other color elastic. Okay, and then you've got your paper, and you can, this is just in one signature, and I'm gonna go not behind here, I'm gonna go be between these two holes, because we did a tall hole and then a shorter hole to hold these in there. And this is also a time if you decide you want this to be even tighter, then you can untie your knot and tie it even tighter. Oops, I did that backwards. And so you could do it like that. You wouldn't even need to do the patchwork. But if you want to hide the little elastics on the side here, you could take some lace and just go over the pieces there. Do I have any fabric? I've got some little fabric here. So you could do a little piece of fabric here on each side there, like a little hinge. I'm just going to leave it. And then take your index card, decide where you're going to want that on the cover. So I'm going to get some Fabri-Tac. And of course, we always wait, wait, wait for this stuff to come. Let's see. I want it this way. This way, I think I like it this way. And come on, Fabri-Tac. 
you get to the bottom of the bottle and it's all nice and thick it doesn't want to come out let's see come on you could use uh, I'm sure you could use Aileen's on this too but I'm going to fabric so I like the fabric tack and you could probably um, I don't know maybe you could use score tape on this because it's not going to get a heavy workout that's going on top of it's not trying to hold the fabric together but my go-to is always fabric tack Zoe evidently has an opinion she always has an opinion okay and then we'll take this and evidently Zoe wishes I'd done something differently let that set for a minute and then you can tie this up like so I'll probably cut off a little bit more of that tie and there you go there is a journal that started off as a 4x6 index card with some patchworks. You can see just a little bit of the elastic there. And of course, you know, if you wanted to make this a traditional traveler's notebook, you would add a, another hole here in the center and you would make your closure that way. But I wanted to dress it up a little bit with the sari silk. And you've got it here. You've got a pocket. You've got your pages. you got another pocket. There you go. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments for me, and I will see you next time. Thanks so much for watching. Bye for now.